for being here. I'm so now, you know each other a little bit, right? <laughs> little you work bit. together. Well, we just met backstage, really, yes. right, John? Yes, or... we do have an IMDb credit in common. Uh, Wag the Dog. Which is one of my absolute one. favorite really? films. I love that film. It's a great film. I love no, that movie. Yeah. But you didn't have scenes together in no, this, we no? didn't. No, uh-uh. Why was it going, you, you, why? Uh, I was basically an extra uh, in the White House war room, and... <laughs> For many years, I wasn't 100% sure I was in the film because uh, I was watching on a VCR or on HBO. But recently, because of Netflix, I was able to slow it down and confirm that I am in the movie. <laughs> That's good. Look at that. I, I love it. What do you remember about shooting that film? I mean, I was, I, I was in a scene with Robert De Niro and Dustin Hoffman at the same time. And Incredible. I was like, I, I, I just think I was... Just like, it was one long tracking shot. And I think I just remembered, just don't mess up this one line that you have, Kirsten, because you're working with these two, like, legends right now. It's such a good, I really implore anybody to go and search that film out. I love it. It's, it's kind of more pertinent I now was just than it even yeah. was before. Yes, yes. Now, Kirsten, so. since you yeah. you were last on the show, we have to congratulate you on your second son earlier this year. Yeah. So yeah. thrilled for you. On a scale of, on a scale of one, too exhausted. Where are we? Where are we on that? Zero. No, <laughs> no like, we're like below one. No, last night was rough. So, so we're we're like we're we're in a new. We're we were sick last night. We're in a like you know. Oh God. Me and Jesse are really in it. Those so, nights. Yeah. Those nights. Those nights. They are Those brutal. Even just sleeping next to a monitor, it's like you don't really sleep. No. It's just like, eh, and this like blue light just. You're not sleeping. You're not sleeping. <laughs> your kids are a little older. Uh, right? Yeah, they're eight and uh, thirteen. So. And you're writing. Is this right? You're writing a book for teens. Yes. Uh, yeah, I've written a uh, middle grade novel. It's called uh, Troublemaker. Um, and uh, yeah, I was uh, I was actually set to write kind of a fun mystery novel, but um, it was last year and the pandemic hit and George Floyd was murdered and we were and the, there was all this anti Asian violence and uh, I was trying to. I was struggling with how to talk about it with my kids, and my thoughts drifted, and I went back to the riots in 1992, and I was thinking about that. And um, so the story concerns a boy who comes home from school on that day. His uh, shop owner father goes to their store in South Central to board it up, and he, in a misguided attempt to uh, win his affection, decides that his father must have a gun to protect himself. So he sneaks out of the house and uh, delivers a gun to his father, and that, that's the story of the novel. Wow, it's, just, it's, a really, it's quite a deep, uh, it's quite a deep, it runs quite deep for a teenager, but I think it's a wonderful thing yeah. to talk about in many ways. Right, I, mean, I, I guess um, I, I, I came to the realization, I was like, are these subjects too mature? And I thought, you know what? I, I, I think it's a disservice to actually not talk about these, uh, these things with children now, because it is in their lives, whether we like it or not. Yeah. Um, you know, guns, racism, uh, whatever it is. Yeah, I mean, when you started, what age were you when you started acting? I mean, can you call it acting? I don't know. <laughs> I was like three, like modeling in New York and like little commercials. But I then think. when you moved here, you moved in the, sort of, which is quite an infamous place called the oh, Oakwood Apartments. Yes, the famous. Yeah. Which is where lots of kind of child stars and people would go and stay, right? Yes, it was like a safe environment for people to live in with their children and it was furnished apartments and so you felt safe, yes. So what was it like when you were there? Well, it was like, uh, well, we kind of kept it ourselves, but I do remember I, when I booked Interview with the Vampire, which was obviously such a big deal, and, like so many auditions, I remember like the next day going to the local convenience store and, the, and, the, and one of the little girls there was like, oh, my agent says I'm going to be the next Kirsten Dunst. And I was <laughs> like, well, that's strange, because uh, <laughs> that's me. No, <laughs> just like, like she didn't even know who she was talking to, but it was already like a thing, you know? That's like, amazing. Ah, you know, like this little girl got this thing, yeah. But, yeah. And now, look at you, because we have to talk look about your, your brilliant <laughs> performance in your incredible new movie, The Power of the Dog. I mean, <laughs> the reviews are sensational. I'm very it's, lucky, yeah. People are talking, nice. Oscar buzz, all those things. I mean, for anyone who doesn't know, tell, what the, tell us what the film's about and who you play. Well, it's, you know, it's hard to sum up pretty quickly, but it basically, I play a widow, Rose, who runs an inn, and my son and I move to this ranch, 
and um, I marry Jesse Plemons' character, George, and uh, his brother starts to gaslight me. He doesn't want me there, and he starts to psychologically torture me. So that's the film. Like, no, it's a, <laughs> we should say that's it's a, a, little, it's it's a, a big Campion broad film. It's too. a big broad comedy. It's a huge, huge it's comedy. It's like The Hangover. It's a musical. Yeah. <laughs> There's piano playing. I play piano in the film. Um, you really? I do. I learned piano for the film. Wow. How hard was that? So How long hard. did it take no, to learn the piano? No, but genuinely. <laughs> it, it was really hard, actually, but I just, I'm so, it's hard to talk about how hard everything is sometimes. As of actors, course. you're just like a little like, okay. I did, um, though, learn how to play two pieces. One was cut out, which is kind of a bummer, because every night I'd just be like, one hand, another hand, and then when I finally combined them to hands, I was cried and thanked God. <laughs> It's true. I just, it's very hard to learn an instrument when you're older. It's just, oh, not it, really no, it's, easy it, to do. it really is. I've been yeah. trying for Guitar, about what? 30 years to what? truly accomplish the piano. And, uh, <laughs> it's just not going there. I don't want to learn to play. I want to just be able to play. I just want to yeah, be me right too. in there. You know, now well, I know you're. Uh, Benedict is just rolling how to, uh, is just learning how to roll cigarettes. Well, that's he learned skill. a lot of other things too, but rolling cigarettes one-handed, which is—I oh, one mean, okay. that's kind of like—I mean, I would yeah. just be like this I would and pay be like, "PCGI this." <laughs> yeah. like, now, there's actually some piano playing in the clip that we're about to say. Can you perfect. set up this clip for us? Sure. Um, so Benedict's character is gaslighting me and kind of trumping me with his artistry and trying to intimidate me because um, I'm trying to practice for this this big dinner we're about to have. Let's take a look at a clip from The Power of the Dog, which is in select theaters now and streaming on Netflix December 1st.